thing, so there's a good amount of water crossing the road right up here. It's a small culvert. Oh my gosh, there's a moose in the road. Did you see that? There's a moose right there. He just ran away. And look at this, we got a big flood. We'll come back in the morning and do this. It's usually a pretty simple solution. It's a small pipe that's usually easy to unplug, but we'll, we'll wait until there's daylight. And, yeah, that, that, that moose will keep an eye on it until the morning. The road right up here. It's a small culvert. Oh my gosh, there's a moose in the road. Did you see that? Hey everyone, so last night we discovered a beaver flood out here in the middle of the woods and I slept overnight here and it was actually kind of hot. Today is October 27th and it's pretty hot out for this time of year. Today's high temperature is supposed to be 72. Last night it didn't get below 55. That's very warm for almost November in northern Maine and next week it'll be normal though. High temperatures will just be around 35, maybe 38, and it'll be very cold at night. This area will likely have some snow by next week, amazingly. So let's get on the road. We have about a half an hour drive, which would be a perfect amount of time to wake up and have something to eat. Yeah, it's actually pretty amazing waking up and it's actually 64 degrees right now and it's 8 in the morning. That's very warm. It's like summer this couple of days up here. Perfect place to sleep last night. No log trucks going by. I've slept in the same spot before. The last time I had to put earplugs in because there was log trucks going by all night. Had a good night's sleep. haven't tried to build a dam next to the road to make their pond even deeper. The culvert pipe is right here underneath this slight hump, so it shouldn't be that hard to get rid of. I can tell the beavers are very active currently because I see floating pieces of debris that they've shaved the bark off as they eat it. That's their secondary pond. They live both above and below it. Let's get out and find this culvert. Crunch.
Someone's coming, I hear a car. Roads that aren't being used growing really fast. Just a couple years ago, I used to drive up there and camp. I could still plow through those trees, but it would leave a lot of scratches. It's hunting season. I see the guy's got his orange hat. You see, this is what I was saying when I was driving through here earlier. The beavers are shaving all the bark off as they're chewing it because they eat the bark of the trees. The thing I really noticed they don't like is pine. So once we get that pipe unclogged, this will stop crossing the road and it'll start receding back in here and these clouds from people driving in it, you'll see going in there. Even if we don't get it by the time these clouds clear, just the movement of it coming back will stir more of it up. Every time I come out here, it's more and more bald because they keep cutting down the trees on the edge of the road to plug it up again and again. The last time I was out here, I got the blockage to move. It moved into the center of the road, got stuck maybe at a joint in the culvert or a slightly crushed section. Could be crushed by a vehicle or a frost heave. It's a junk plastic pipe. So... We had a gigantic stick that was maybe 20 feet long. I was jamming back and forth inside the pipe, and that's how I got it undone. You see all the growth of iron oxidizing bacteria in there. The whole ditch is filled with leaves. This thing hasn't flowed in quite a while. I haven't been here since July. Who knows, it may not have flown in months. So, got the pipe there. The pipe will be down in the water here somewhere. I'll find it. Let's just set the cameras up. I see lots of their floating debris that they've chewed. Now, one thing to take note, especially when I'm showing you guys before and after, see these rocks? These rocks will be out of the water. You can't even tell they're there right now. That one right there is poking out a teeny bit, but these rocks will be completely out. This will drain back over three feet. All right, everyone, camera number one is set up. And I'm turning on camera number two. I'm going to walk over to the other side of the road. Camera number two is going. Woo! And now we're going over to the other side to place camera number two. This has not gone in a while. I see so much debris down there. I'm seeing oil in the water that's not getting flushed away. That oil's created from the swamp water. It's all kind of nasty, rotting debris, and it makes a oily sheen on the surface of the water. That's not from machinery or anything. It's always found out in the nasty swamps. Now, we might have a pretty good blast here. All right, let's try to get this unclogged. All right, let's see if this will be an easy one or a hard one. First, I gotta find the pipe, which is gonna be pretty far down. I'm feeling around with my feet for the ribs of the culvert. That's a rock. Maybe there. Yeah, I found it. Let's hope it's not plugged too much. Already got some flow. Hopefully they left us an easy one, the beavers. This water is so cold. No, we just did something. I hear it coming out the other side already. I also just heard a bullfrog. Let's 
water's freezing. I just have to make enough space to get the rake in there. This is like uh, ice water. This will be able to freeze fast. They got a bad one. Beavers always build it back stronger. Every time you remove a dam, because they think it failed. I hope we can even get it. It's very far in there. This is worrying me because it's just about open but not really flowing. If I leave this without opening it, they'll get it so bad. I'm hoping it just gives at once. Oh, there it goes. It let loose at once. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Hey, I just saw like a tidal wave come out of the other side. Wow. Oh, wow. That is all clear. The suction here is amazing. The pipe is down in there. Now we'll drop back three feet. Look at it. I see the current coming over. That's awesome. I saw like a literal tidal wave come out of there when that unplugged. Now this is kind of dangerous if I like slipped, because that is sucking so hard, and I could probably get my legs in there, but let's get away from that for now. Wow. Awesome. The water will be off the road, I'd say within 20 minutes, and those rocks will start showing. 
I got a little worried at first because it was so out of reach, but just pulling those things out unstabilized it inside of a smooth pipe. Because unlike a metal culvert, at least plastic pipes are only corrugated on the outside. They're smooth on the inside. Look at all that oily sludge from the surface of the pond it's bringing over. This water looks pretty clean, right? But as it's sucked over and concentrated, look what's actually floating on the water. Nasty, oily from rotting things in the swamp. That'll all get sucked through once the water level gets a little lower or that whirlpool starts getting going. I'm already seeing water drop difference there. It's a tiny pond and we're releasing water so fast that it almost got up to camera number two. That's nice. I wanna get down in there with the rake for a minute and see if we can get anything out of the entrance that may have got stuck on its way out that could cause a problem. Yeah, like I said, it's pretty warm out today, but that water, that's a reminder of winter. It's so cold. Clear. This is the blockage. Look at it. That's a lot of water. You saw what I just pushed out of the way so it doesn't become up. Because if we kept doing this year after year, which I'll keep doing if it keeps happening, that blockage will get so big. Just push it over. Look at that. It's like five feet of debris. That was a pretty thick blockage in there. And I like how it's kind of coming out here like a sauna jet with all the little bubbles. That's pretty interesting. I'll take you guys in there for a minute, show everyone what's going on. Look at the debris on this side now, the sludge debris. And look, it's slowly getting sucked in. If we zoom in, it kind of looks like a mouth taking it in. That's really gross, look at that. As it comes over, it's just slowly getting attracted in there. Oh, gulp. Oh, the leaves gone. As the water's dropping, it's getting easier to form a whirlpool. In a couple minutes, you'll hear a lot of slurping. You heard a giant slurp at the beginning. That was mainly from the suction was so huge at first as the blockage was pulling the water through. Oh, now we finally got a good whirlpool. Suck all that sludge in. That's pretty gross. Look at when we zoom in. Look at all the nasty wrinkles as the surface of the water is coming together. Yeah. That's amazing. The water's already slowing down. Yep, the, that's how fast we got it done. Water's already slowing down. And that's the blockage. Wow, the water's so powerful. This is like pulling my legs. It's coming out so fast. Yeah, I was just over here a minute ago and I can already tell it's not going over this waterfall as fast. That's a ton of water. And guess what, everyone? It's already not crossing the road. The flood has already receded. And now that the surface area of the pond is much smaller, that just means it's going to drop faster and faster now. Look. 
already gone. And you see what I meant? Now that the water's all the way down, it's now eroding the silt that the pond left behind, pulling it back over. Pretty soon this coffee looking water will make its way back over to the culvert. Airplane. It's like one of those ocean planes that can land down on the water or even a beaver pond. Look at those sticks out there that the beavers chewed off. They look so smooth and polished up. So, see how the vegetation in the back of the swamp gets thicker and thicker? There's a much bigger beaver dam with a huge pond, and I suspect downstream. I know there's definitely swamps, but I do suspect they also live down there. So the water is now zero crossing the road. Just a little bit of trickle from the puddles coming back. And there's really not much silt, mainly from cars driving through it, pushing it off. But I think this has been underwater for months. Just because, look, even water grass, the parts that were completely submerged are dead. But other than that, these type of trees, they love water. They grow next to water in the drainage ditch. You could have a drought for just a couple of months and you'll see them dead everywhere if they don't have that trickling drainage ditch water. If we came back here in a couple hours, this would look so low as it drops down. But on my drive out of here, I'll show you what this looked like before and after once it's completely gone. That puddle will be gone by the time we get out and whatever's remaining, it'll eventually sink into the ground or dry up. It'll be warm today. But by doing this, hopefully we prevented an icy disaster next week when it gets really cold out. And we'll probably be back here in November. And if it's the beavers build it back before it freezes over we'll do it again in november it's a secondary pond beavers will always try to conserve as much water as possible and they don't live at this pond i've put cameras here before and sometimes they didn't even show up after a month it's completely random they could come here tonight or they could come here next spring they don't prioritize a secondary pond but if they discover it low they'll get on it Look, that rock I pointed out is now way out of the water. The one that was completely submerged is coming out. Pretty soon there'll be more and more. Like that stick right there is actually caught on a rock that'll be coming out in just a moment. That tree stump over there is a perfect example of where the water was. You can't see much now. We only drop maybe 8 inches. But once we drop down like 3 feet, it'll look so different. And you see the vortex over here is becoming more powerful. And there's even some sticks grass and things coming over it looks like it's getting jammed against the entrance nope it took that whole thing down in there but is this a stuck branch yep wow there was so much current on that oh this is cool oh see all the slimes on me i want to show you something so i get the most random things in my youtube feed has anybody ever seen those videos i don't know if they're at a carnival or something the guy will have somebody slowly put their arm down in the tub and it leaves that film on them. That's what this kind of reminds me of, you know? Uh, a minute ago when I didn't try, it actually did it pretty well. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. Maybe my hand has to be dry. Let me use my other hand, which is pretty dry, for it to adhere to. Yeah, it, it worked, see? It's like a film, it just stuck right on me. Yeah, my hand has to be dry for it to work, I guess. And see, it also sticks to my hand because it was dry when I put it in. Now I actually have to scrub that off. But when my hand's wet, it doesn't stick. When my hand, my other hand dries, I'll try it again in a moment and show you. If there's slime, there might be too much current for that slime barrier to come back again. No more water crossing anywhere. Water has drastically receded. I noticed that this year was actually kind of great for fall colors. I made some videos of that stuff earlier and everything was orange and yellow earlier in the season and it lasted a long time because this month 
Overall, there wasn't a ton of rain. There wasn't a ton of wind that knocks it out of the trees. We also so far have only had one deep freeze. Not even a random frost. Just one random deep freeze two nights ago. And that's been it. Usually when you get some frost, it helps bring out the bright red colors. We didn't see much red this year. That's still kind of orange, but if you want a lot of red, you need a frost. But when that happens, you don't see the other colors as often. It's been a pretty warm fall, I guess, overall. And now it's soon going to get pretty cold. I'm looking around here now that I put my stuff back to the vehicle and I'm looking down at the ground and these might be the tracks from that moose last night that was running through here. Now the flood is completely off the road. It's receded off the road about a foot. It's going to keep receding about two more feet. I'm going to hang around maybe 20 more minutes and we'll see everything go down. It's going to happen fast now. You see, this is the level where the road was. Down here from vehicles driving through it being flooded. The beavers deteriorated it down another four inches or so. But, thankfully for all the road damage, right there is a gravel pit. It couldn't be easier than that to fix it. They don't even need a dump truck. The loader can just get it right from there and bring it on over. We still have a flower in the middle of the road. That rock I was just pointing out, that was about five minutes ago. Okay, it's already out of the water, the one I said the stick was snagged on. Those will be like little islands soon. Couldn't see those rocks at all before. And look, we can actually see the culvert itself now. There's a couple pieces of debris stuck in the current. When I was standing here looking at it, I noticed that a stick came over. It somehow got stuck, but the current was still pulling it, so it flipped up, then got sucked in. That was kind of cool to see. And I accidentally wet my hand. I want to touch this stuff again, because that was kind of cool. Let's try it from underneath. Uh, that won't work. Ah, really. uh, no, it won't work, because my hand was wet. I actually had to go through it, but... I also looked over here, which was pretty interesting. Anytime you see tall grass like this, you see? Something's been nibbling on it. There's a... There's little tiny snails around eating it. So while I'm waiting around to see it completely drained, let's take a little walk up here. When I was a little kid, I used to love riding my bike around on these roads. There used to be a good campground around here. Keep on going. It goes down to the lake. You go up there. Used to be a, the transfer station with big dumpsters for the people who live up here. They closed it now. Not enough people actually live out here at the moment. But there used to always be bears up there because of the garbage. This gravel pit is, they're not using it at the moment. They got the rocks because they just don't want people driving in there for some reason. I have no idea why. They just put those rocks there about two years ago. People used to camp in here all the time. People come here still for target practicing. But you see, there's still lots of fill when they want to fix the roads. Tons of sand. They put the bigger rocks over here. I imagine the bigger rocks, they were probably scooping it and dumping it into a sifter. And that's how they got all the bigger rocks out. These places are always good for camping. They're, it's not hard to find a gravel pit like this because they don't like to ship it pretty far on the roads. You can find gravel pits like this all over in the wilderness for maintaining these roads. And it's good to camp in here because it's like a bowl. Oftentimes, there's no wind in here. It's actually quieter too. It's also a sound buffer. Not that it's noisy in the wilderness anyways. That's a pretty nice rock. Look at this.
That is cool. I hear something, it might be that airplane. I just was thinking to myself, if I climb up here, the beaver swamp's right there, maybe I, that might show a view of their bigger pond. So I wanna take a walk up this hill for a moment and see what we got. These hills have stabilized a lot back when this was actually a working gravel pit. It was actually kind of fun and challenging climbing up here because as you start walking, the whole ground starts slipping towards you. Not that hard. I just got to put my feet in sideways and it's held together pretty well. So you see all the trees along the hill. I believe they slipped and somehow just anchored themselves because they're pretty big. How's the vegetation? Oh my gosh, awesome. You can see the giant beaver pond. See, there's the road. This is where the beavers actually live. I've never showed it before. Wow. And look, there's a squirrel right there. So this is the beaver's big pond. That is really big. Way bigger than I thought it was. Sometimes you can see it coming in on the road when the trees are completely bald in the winter. Got some mushrooms covered in flies. I wanna see the dam. Here it is. Can't see it from the road and we're like, what? Less than 100 feet from the road? That's one nice looking beaver dam. And you see, this is the unfortunate thing. They have such a big, beautiful pond here that's like chest deep. But eventually they're gonna get relocated or hunted because they keep messing with the road down there for that measly little pond. See, you can't see down there where I'm working because of all the brush. This I imagine is their primary pond where they actually live. Oh, these beavers have been here for years. Look at the stuff down here. This has been here for a while, but everything up top is more recent. Yeah, look how recent they just flooded new sections. And maybe there's even another pond further up. The beaver lodge oftentimes is somewhere off to the edge in the bushes hidden, so I don't see it. But this is a big, beautiful pond. You see the beavers must be hanging out over here. See all the branches that they left behind? The beaver literally climbs up on that log and is chewing things. That's the beaver's hangout. I love how you see, for structural strength, how the dam zigzags. I'm gonna walk back to the car this way, actually. Ooh, stinky swamp gas. I just stepped into this and I didn't, the mud went down a lot further than I thought. But they got a beautiful beaver pond up here. I wish there was a good way to stop beavers from building down by the road. Because they're, they're going to get relocated just because of this. So I'm going to walk actually back up to the road where I see this beaver pond sometimes in the winter. And then I'll walk back to the car. Seems easiest. Maybe I'm just going to get myself lost. So I see this sometimes from the road. The road's got to be here somewhere up on this hill. Oh, these beavers, they're actually right now redesigning the land. Now that the water's so deep, they're flooding into here. And this is going downhill. They're about to send water somewhere brand new. Does this water come right back to the same culvert pipe? I don't know. But that means they're gonna have to start building another dam over here. Just like when humans build dams, they have to fill every little valley. Cause look, they're now sending current down here. And look at this, years ago, cause look at the size of that tree. Something probably a log skid did a little spin out right here. And tracks in the woods 
that they can be seen for a century because nothing really flattens out the ground. All these lumps you see are probably from the last time they logged it. All right. This is how I must see it in the winter because now we're back up to the road and I'm parked. We gotta walk down the road to the left. Further than I thought actually. I have a couple hundred feet to walk back. I'm back, so I just came out up there. Maximum 30 feet elevation from the pond. So they're, they are redirecting the water's path of flow, but it's all gonna come back here, no matter what they do. And that's a big wall of water. If that beaver dam up there ever failed, this would go underwater for just a little bit. It's not a big pond. I doubt it would even make it unpassable. Highly unlikely. But I don't think that dam up there is going to fail anytime soon. Beaver dams fail very rarely. And that one is, it's got trees and stuff incorporated into it. It's super thick. Yeah, it's very rare when they just fail. A storm has to trigger it, usually. Now the water coming off the road, it's like that coffee colored, but it's moving so slowly, it's so diluted, you can barely see it at the moment. Now look, we're dropped back far, and wow, look at this. I only took a walk up there 10 minutes or so. Now the culvert's out of the water. See, it's been hit by the excavator. And look, the current's not that strong. Before, it was like scary strong. Looks like they spray painted it white at some point to be able to see it underneath the murky water. Let's get down in there. I want to move my feet around so anything that's like immediately in front of it gets sucked in and not used as material now things thrown up like this beavers have never reused their materials that i've noticed unless they are completely out of everything else because to a beaver they think it already failed and yes a beaver they, they are smart enough to know that they they know their sticks they know they chewed this at some point and they know they used it they're pretty smart in that way. They got good memories. And maybe you've noticed I've probably unclogged this over the years eight times. Every single time, the dam is usually harder to remove because they build it back stronger because they don't know I'm removing it. They think it failed. So that tells them they have to beef up their building. The last time I was out here, it slid and it got stuck. Then I had to find a big stick to hammer at it and thankfully it went. Today, that was a pretty thick dam. That was like four or five feet. We finally got it to move. And I was worried because it was in there a little bit, but nope. Came out like a tidal wave. That was nice. Water now has another foot or so to go. And look at all those rocks that we couldn't see before. It's kind of awesome. That is awesome. Well, I'm going to be back here in maybe another hour or so. I want to go ahead and check out some other things, and I'll show you guys too. I want to, there's a really good lake down there I want to take a ride to just to look at it before it freezes over. And then I want to go down the old bear road. There's some pretty cool mud holes and things I like to see. Look at that right there. They're all out of the water. But I want to see this thing completely drain, so we'll be back in like an hour. It should be done by then. All right, so we're not going to come through this place again. We're going to go for a little ride. So here's what this area looked like before. Look at this. I'm surprised the beavers haven't tried to build a dam next to the road to make their pond even deeper. And here's what it looks like after. Drained, don't have to do a giant splash anymore. Looking good. We'll come back to this bare road afterwards. They build all the roads like ramps because all the tractor trailers are supposed to be going in. Most of these roads are loops and they're one ways, just like on the highway, it keeps the traffic flowing. Uh, I actually flagged that one there back.
back in the spring because the big trucks hitting that they'll, they'll, that culvert will be crushed pretty soon. But they're not going to log it until it's frozen, so it won't really matter at that point. I love how they made that curve like they're like a racetrack, so you can go around it fast without drifting. Someone got a fire pit here. The water is so perfectly still. It's awesome. Sometimes I like it when the lake is completely, or not completely, but a little low and you can go for quite a hike on the edge. Or if the, if the weather's really warm, just in the water. The water's so crystal clear. And the thing I like about lakes in Maine is if you look closely, all the rocks in the lakes around here, it's like they went through a rock polisher. It just feels like aquarium gravel, which is actually pretty awesome. I like to see the shale rock here just flaking apart. Yeah, these rocks are very smooth. It feels like things that would be at the ocean because every time there's a little storm, this stuff gets thrown up here and it's like sandblasting it so everything is smooth like a rock tumbler. See that? Nothing sharp, they're all smooth. This area actually has a problem with people coming out and stealing it because of that. I camped here a few years back. Someone made this little campsite. And there was also a low class individual who stayed here. The water's so still, it's almost like a mirror. And I actually forgot, I actually still have the big high boots on. I could walk the edge here for hours and never, never come across anything because we're so far out in the middle of nowhere. There's no houses, no anything. It's so rural that no one moves here. There's even islands that they have ferries to log them. Especially considering half of the year you can't even get to the islands without a snowmobile. It's frozen, but it doesn't freeze solid enough to build ice roads for those big trucks at least. But I've seen people out here with campers and being pulled by trucks. I just love how smooth all the pebbles are. There's lots of really cool rocks here too. Oh, maybe you heard that on the microphone. A beetle was on my camera and just took off. It's so still and warm today in this water, unlike the beaver pond, this actually still feels like summertime. These bigger bodies of water don't cool down fast. Yeah, I could actually swim in this for a very long time without getting cold. The amount of flat rocks is awesome. I could just skipping some stones. Most of them are pretty flat. Not too bad. There's also really teeny ones, but they're all pretty flat. Yeah, not great. There's oil here, but that I don't think this is natural, this oil on the edge. I'm thinking that might be from a boat. This one's thick, but I think I can get it one time. Yep. This one's very thin. Twice. Sometimes if I'm lucky, I can get it to go like five times if I get it correctly. That was just twice again. So I just walked down the coast for 
almost a half an hour. It's nice. I think there's also a lot of humidity today. It really is making it feel like summertime. What type of beetle is this? This is the same type that was just on my camera. Come on, focus in. There you go. Just standing on the water. It looks like he's actually drinking, maybe. Can he take off from the water? I don't know. I don't think he can take off. I actually saw a frog out here. It's warm enough for them. That's some giant beautiful trees. And not many humans come out here, so I hear a lot of angry squirrels who aren't used to this. This rock is pretty. And I love how none of them are slippery. Just me walking, I'm creating more ripples than anything else. All right, let's go see what that beaver swamp looks like now after, it'll be over an hour. decided I'm going to do the bear road first to give us more time. So we got to come all the way over here. I'm going to turn the wrong way on the on-ramp. Not enough space. Would have been if that dead tree wasn't there. Now we're going up in the back of that gravel pit. road's got some pretty exciting muddy parts that are actually also completely flooded by beavers. That would actually be cool to get out and investigate it. Last night I was out here doing a moose watching vlog where we only saw one, the same one you guys saw. Saw some other creatures I believe, but just the one moose. And I discovered this whole area was flooded and maybe today I kind of want to get out and Maybe we can find the beaver dam. That'd be fun to add to this video. This road's actually really beautiful. The trees on the sides are like a giant hedge. I used to ride my bicycle down these roads when I was little. But back then they were in good shape because giant log trucks were actually using them. Now this dip here that we got some puddles and oh there is a culvert but I can tell it's unclogged. You see, now that the drainage ditches are so neglected, most of the water is just traveling in the road, creating mud. And this is one of the areas this road was used to log by the look of the growth. Maybe as recently as six years in this spot. Right here, it looks more like 10 or 12 years. Again, I hit that hole right there hard last night. Didn't expect it to be so deep. Lots of mud. But these roads are fun to drive because of the mud. drive down this road with my old vehicle it would have got stuck went down it once and I remember I hit a lot of things but it was really dry out at that point it's the kind of moose road this is the really muddy section here. It doesn't look bad, right? If I went through it with speed, I'd be fine. Oh, yeah, I actually did it. Last night, I went through it really slowly and cautiously and got stuck. Just had to use four-wheel drive. Hear that? I'm dragging something, I think. Yeah, I left something behind. 
it gone though completely yeah I think so yeah right here this road is completely flooded because of the beavers see this completely flooded out there used to always be moose here Right here is a gigantic hole because the culvert pipe was actually removed because it was sharp. So go down into the hole, into the trench. The water is, I'm gonna find out exactly how deep because I'm gonna get out and walk through that. It's a little over a foot deep, I'd say. Oh, that was pretty deep too. And now right here, this road has been trimmed, they've been working on it, and I think they're going to reopen that muddy trail. Too bad, because it's actually kind of fun to drive through. Stinky. I must have released so many swamp gases driving through that. It stinks now. They just logged this last summer. But they didn't come down here any further. Wow, this area actually reeks after driving through that mud. Really stinky now. And there's a culvert pipe right here. Is That that may have been something they pulled out because it looks a little broken, but it also looks like it's in good shape. Maybe they're about to install it. Look at this. Brand new trees everywhere cut down by the beavers. They're working on it. I knew they were responsible the first time we drove through it last night. Because the last time I was out here where that culvert's missing, there was water trickling. But now the whole thing is flooded. And right here, that's not from water. This is a beaver trail. And they're going through here constantly. All the time. Let's take the beaver trail. How deep is this? That's their dam. Big beaver dam. It's pretty old. Look at the tree growth on it. And it's helping reinforce it. One very strong dam. Oh wow. Look at this. We wouldn't have been able to see that last time. It would have been overgrown. Beaver Lodge right on that island and that's an old beaver lodge look at the trees growing there and look what they're building next to it this might be plans for a really big dam or that might also be their reserve because here's what beavers do right before winter you see the whole the entire coast they cut down every single tree look at all those stumps lining the coast well those stumps that's a very tough tree those will regenerate and they'll have a ton of growth for the next year. It looks like they cut them all down, stuffed them here in a pile. That might be their food reserve. They love eating the bark off trees. And with this giant reserve, when the pond freezes over, look at that. All they got to do is in their lodge, come out through the underwater entrance, come over here, grab a stick, bring it back up in the lodge, chew on it. When they're done, throw it out the door, go grab another one. That's like their pantry for the winter now. And that's why... With a primary beaver pond, it's such an issue Dra draining it right before winter. If this dam was to be removed, they're going to work their butts off trying to restore it and get the water level back up. If they can't, they're going to have to relocate because now they're open to predators. But the worst scenario is if this was frozen with, say, a layer of six inches of ice, then somebody comes along, the logging company or whoever, Removes that beaver dam so they can reopen this road in the middle of winter. Now you got six inches of ice that's frozen and it's going to drop with the water. Trapping all the food supply that they created. Now they have no food for the winter. But they're very resilient. They swim under ice. They'll even walk around in the snow. The cold will not kill them. They can walk off into the woods and find new food by cutting down trees. But without the ability to float it around. But mainly their issue is the predators. When their lodge is going to be wide open. That would be the biggest concern for the beavers. But that is like the best example I've ever been able to show. Of their food reserve. 
it's it's not neat enough. That's not going to be a huge lodge. That's their food reserve. You see on the other side, they didn't cut down too much because I don't think they're living over here. This side, you know, it's part of their pond, but I don't think they intended on it. Not really. Actually, they did. There's a beaver dam there. Two separate ponds, actually. Look at this. This pond is like a foot higher than this one. So if this was to be sliced, that wouldn't affect them over the winter. It would drain the road, though. That might, that might be what the logging company does if they reinstall this pipe. Now, I just drove through here. I want to see how deep this is. I was cautious at first because I know a culvert pipe got pulled out of here, and I didn't know how far I may have sunk down. I'd say 16, 18 inches, not that bad. Come up here around the corner. That grass would not have grown there if this was flooded, so it's very recently flooded, as I know. I drove down here back in July. Here's another opening. Look at all the trees they cut down. These are not fresh, that was a couple months ago. But every tree was probably, they put into their pile. Now this right here is kind of interesting. What do you think this was? Did somebody build like a little house? Like a little clubhouse? Like, and I'm talking, this right here is like 10 years plus, a long time ago. Before this beaver pond existed, what did somebody build? It looks like these logs are crisscrossed, like somebody built a little log cabin to spend the night in. Something. They may have just been neatly stacked, but that's kind of interesting. That's a human-built structure. Now sitting in the water. And I can tell by the swamp grass here. This pond has been here ever since I've been alive. This is a very old beaver pond. But I can tell by the grass, the water level has increased by like a foot. But I can also see evidence of the coast. The water's been much deeper at some point also. Look at the clean water filtering in. That looks so cool. Oh, this is very sticky, muddy. Just in the middle, though. Over here is nice and solid. The logging company built this road pretty nice. No issues. No worries about getting stuck, except just that mud hole up there. When I was little, there was a wood pile right here. My grandparents always point that out. Here it is. <laughs> it crushed down so much. I remember when that pile was actually in good enough condition, people were talking about taking the whole thing for firewood for the winter. But, nope, it was left there. Nobody knows why it was left there. I'm only walking up the road right now. Just want to take a good look at that mud hole. Last year I came up here to this mud hole and tried it with my old car and actually bottomed out without the clearance on this hump like a tractor trailer at a railroad crossing. It doesn't look like much, but you could easily get stuck with it if you just had rear wheel drive. And look, there's even moose tracks here. Moose come through here often enough. The water definitely helped. It was mainly people driving through this that made it so gradual, because that used to be a scary drop when the culvert was first removed. With the logging company's plans of fixing that road back there, this might be my last chance to drive through that mud again. So we're gonna head right back there. Drive through some nice mud. I think it's fun driving down these muddy roads. Unfortunately, we don't have many roads that are just mud like that for miles. Not many of them. Or they're just in such bad shape like overgrown usually. Four wheel drive. Alright, let's go.
driving through water like that. I wonder what the beavers think of that. I'm sure we threw a wave into their pond. Well, this is a part, if you don't have four wheel drive, you'll get stuck, but I'm too long for both of my sets of wheels to get stuck in that hole though, so I didn't even feel it happen. pressure washing. Lots of mud from these couple days out here in the woods. Still got some muddy sections because years of the road being neglected. The drainage ditches have filled in. So now the lowest spot's the road, so that's where all the groundwater is traveling. Constant flow of water now in the road. I wish they had to take all their culverts out. There's so many decaying plastic culverts all over the side of the road. At least with the metal ones, it can just rust away and there's not a problem. Usually by the time they take it out, the galvanization is that's gone. So this here is part of a 16 million acre tree farm, basically. A lot of these woods, they said they're legally not allowed to call some of it forest because the way it's replanted without the, di the biodiversity of the forest, they say it's technically a tree farm. But I wonder about the area I'm in now because I'm seeing lots and lots of different types of trees. But there's certain areas you'll drive through. It literally, for thousands of acres, it just looks like an overgrown Christmas tree farm because Every single tree is balsam fir, used for pulp wood, the production of paper, plywood, press board, that kind of stuff. Did they grind the tree up to use it for stuff? Chipboard, not plywood. Maybe plywood, but chipboard is the word I was thinking of technically. This road here was blocked earlier in the year, but somebody chainsawed it. And in this section of the road, this looks beautiful around this corner. It looked just like a hedge. Very pretty road. Around these tight corners when I was little, I used to listen very carefully riding my bicycle out here because around those sharp corners you had to make sure a big truck wasn't coming but that was pretty easy you could hear them long before you could even see them they're, they're very loud all right everybody we're back it's been well over an hour now had some fun at the lake checked out that awesome beaver swamp walked around in the mud drove through some cool mud down there oh wow it's it's dropped back it's as low as it's gonna get Maybe the, maybe the beavers will be back tonight. Maybe they'll be back next week. I think when we come back next month, we'll probably have to drain it back again. I see ripples. I think the beaver already discovered it. If they already discovered it, it'll be plugged in a few hours. I see bubbles coming up from the surface and some ripples. Is that the beaver? Or is it just the rapids creating it? There might be a beaver there, but also water's heavy. It's holding pockets of gas created by rotting material. As the water level drops, it's not putting as much pressure on gas, gas pockets, and you'll see bubbles coming up everywhere naturally too. It might not be the beaver. I think the beaver would have showed himself, would have surfaced by now. Anyways, look at this. We drop back like an entire three feet now. Wow, that's actually making a pretty cool noise. Listen to the water. Well, kind of sounds muffled and cool from up here. Drop back one, almost three feet. Look at these rocks. What kind of creature made those? Some kind of aquatic larvae or something living in the silt on that rock that had to evacuate back down into the water. Does anyone know what kind of larvae may have done that? 
dragonfly larvae maybe. Something was living all over that rock. But now it's time for some befores and afters. Here's what the culvert pipe looked like before when you couldn't see it at all. Down in the water here somewhere, I'll find it. And here's what it looks like after. Pretty awesome. And then we turn, we look here, and here's what this area looked like before. These rocks were completely unnoticeable and just the tip of that one was showing. Let's just set the cameras up. I see lots of their floating debris that they've chewed. Now one thing to take note, especially when I'm showing you guys before and after, see these rocks? These rocks will be out of the water. You can't even tell they're there right now. And if we come over here, zoom in on this log, you can see this log was halfway underwater. You can see the water line. You can see that tree stump behind it has a really good water line to see. And look at this. When we started, this water was all the way up here. Pretty cool. Here's what the other side looked like at its, at its maximum flow. Winter, it's so cold. And here's what it looks like after. Pretty good. And this is about where it's going to keep flowing. When we arrived, there was a pretty good amount of flow going across the road, and we just moved it into the pipe where it's supposed to be flowing. Going good. And you can see the water line across everything out there. You can see all the mud and silt. You can see the water was all up inside here. You can see exactly what was underwater here. You can see the water line if we zoom into the swamp, exactly what was underwater, what was sticking out. And because the beavers don't live here, they likely don't even know about it. I thought there actually may have been a beaver checking it out by the... No, that's just gas bubbles. I see them coming up everywhere. I've seen beavers. They will come up to it immediately, but that's usually when we drain a pond they're actually living at. But because they don't actually live here, I don't think the beaver trapper will get out to this area. Very fast jet. Probably too high, we wouldn't even be able to see it. Been hearing a lot of jets like that lately. Kind of interesting to see planes and things out in the middle of nowhere, but we're not, we're not too terribly far. We're like 30 miles in the wilderness. We're not like hundreds like we are sometimes. I'm actually seeing some dragonflies. One of them just landed right here. Somewhere right there, one of them just landed. Does anyone see it? Where'd it go? Well, this was a very successful day. Now this won't be an icy mess throughout the winter. Also having the water up will also destroy the road because when the road freezes it expands and it would just be a disaster with frost heaving in the springtime. I'm hoping it just gives at once. Oh, there it goes. It let loose at once. Awesome. Oh my gosh. It, I just saw like a tidal wave come out of the other side. It let loose at once. Awesome. Oh my gosh. It, I just saw like a tidal wave come out of the other side. All right, everyone, I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day.
tree line's already thin enough. I can see that big beaver pond. Wow, it's actually very visible now that I'm actually looking for it. I think this is our first loaded log truck we've seen all day coming. I wonder if it's gonna be dusty. I'm gonna close the vents. Yeah, it's a little dusty. Not too bad though. That's very loaded up. Yeah, it's a good amount of dust. Look at that. And right, right back a minute ago, it was awesome to see a gigantic pile of metal culverts. It's awesome to see this area is no longer using the plastic ones that fail within a year of installation. Look at that. I could hear that truck from far away. Heard it as soon as I got out a minute ago. Looks like maybe in the winter they'll be doing some more logging on this area. 